So the resulting eigenmodes give the natural response of the aircraft to pitch perturbations with no control input. So if we look at the approximation um, for a modern high-speed aircraft with maybe u naught of something of the order of 300 meters per second, then that fugoid frequency approximation that we just obtained, root 2 over g, and just to make this simple, we'll say that g is about 10 over 300. This gives something like about 0 0.05 radians per second. So the period associated with that frequency is 2 pi over omega pH, and this is something like 133 seconds, which is over 2 minutes. So this is slow compared to typical aircraft maneuvers. So this is what we mean when we say that it's a slow mode. Okay, so we can also define a damping ratio, and this was discussed in one of the homework assignments. Um, the damping ratio of the fugoid is minus sigma pH over the square root of sigma pH squared plus omega pH squared. And we can work that out to be approximately 1 over root 2 times CD naught over CL naught. So since modern aircraft have good L over D, so CL naught over CD naught is again, as we just discussed, maybe on the order of 10 to 16, then that means oops, that the fugoid damping ratio it's about 1 over root 2 times 1 over 16, which is again about 0 0.05. So this damping ratio indicates how quickly the motion is damped, where larger means that it's damped more quickly. So we see here that the fugoid is weakly damped, so this is a non-dimensional value that uh, where 1 would be a completely damped motion. So suppressing the fugoid, because of this weak damping, requires either an autopilot or active control by the pilot. And active control by the pilot isn't completely unreasonable because of how slow this moment or this mode is. So it's something that the pilot could respond to, but it would also be relatively easy to write an autopilot program to counteract this unwanted motion. So. That's basically everything about our fugoid approximation. Now let's start looking at what happens with the short period. So again, let's draw complex axes. Sigma, omega. And then draw. This is MQ, and I'm just going to draw this in. And I'll explain it as we go, but basically, these arrows represent the movement of the eigenvalues with negative MW decreasing. So we assume for this mode that the pitch motions are too fast for the aircraft to respond to. So travel is in a straight line at a fixed speed with time varying angle of attack. So this means that delta u is zero and delta w is u naught delta theta. And again, I'll try to illustrate what this looks like is maybe back here, our airplane's pointing like this. Of course, this is greatly exaggerated, but I'm trying to make it clear. 
what the movement looked like. Then sometime later, there'll be an instant in time where in fact the aircraft is aligned with the direction of motion. And then sometime later, it'll now have started pitching up. And then coming back down. So the plane is rotating up and down while it moves in a straight line. Now, as a result, we now get a different 2x2 two two system for the dynamics. So now, the motion of interest are delta Q uh, and delta theta, which are governed by MQ, U0, MW, 1, 0, times delta Q, delta theta. And this Jacobian matrix has the eigenvalue pair Lambda 1, 2 is sigma short period plus i times omega short period, which is given by 1 half, again, from the quadratic formula for the characteristic equation of the Jacobian. And q squared plus 4 u naught and w. Now, the behavior essentially depends on mw. Typically, MW is negative. So here's our definition of MW again, just to be clear. And so we can see that as MW increases, and because we're talking about it typically being negative, when we say increase, we mean it's approaching zero, three limiting cases occur. So if we go back to this graph that I drew, um, we can define three cases, A, B, and C. So for A, MW is less than negative MQ squared over 4U0. And when that's the case, we'll get that sigma sp is mq over 2, and omega sp is 1 half times the square root of negative mq squared minus 4 u naught mw. So this is going to be uh, oscillatory. But damped motion in the same kind of idea that we had for uh, the phyloid. Now, if we consider the other cases, so B, where we're along the axis, which I'm going to copy this figure so that we have it on hand. I'll pop this in so you can continue to look at it. So now if we consider scenario B, which is MW equals negative MQ squared over 4 u naught, then what we get is that sigma SP is still 1 half MQ, but omega SP is 0. And this is what we call critically damped. So there won't be any oscillation, right, because the frequency is zero. So since we're over here on the negative uh, uh, real axis, the motion will monotonically decay. Also, I've drawn these as these two eigenvalues being distinct, but in fact, they'll have the same value, and these are supposed to represent two points being essentially on top of one another. Finally, for scenario C, which is as MW reaches zero, then again, sigma sp uh, becomes mq, and sigma sp is zero. Uh, 
So these are now two distinct values of the real part of the eigenvalue, whereas before both eigenvalues had the same real uh, component. And this is the threshold of instability because one of the uh, components now um, is on the verge of having a positive real value. So how wh what's happening if we increase this MW or the CM alpha? Well, increasing that can be caused by moving the center of gravity of the aircraft rearward or by reducing the horizontal tail area or moment arm. What we can take away from this is that if CM alpha is positive, instability will occur. Based on this short period of approximation. But if we think about this a little bit more, we're going to be able to realize that things are not quite so simple. So remember that we assumed that the short period frequency was significantly higher than the fugoid frequency. But for C, we said that the short period frequency is zero, which is now violating this previous assumption. So what happens? Now, to get that answer, we'd have to consider the full 4x4 four four longitudinal dynamic system. And then we, could, we would be able to see that the eigenvalues behave like this. So here's the short period out here, and here's the fugoid. And so this motion is as CM alpha increases, and this is also the motion as CM alpha increases. So actually, the fugoid will go unstable before the short period goes unstable. And so the actual instability resulting from uh, a positive CM alpha is a monotonic pitch divergence. So basically, the nose goes up or the nose goes down until the wings reach a stall condition. But the important takeaway is that even considering this full system, the condition that we obtained for instability threshold from the short period still, that is still true. So if CM alpha is positive, is still, uh, predicting instability.